Uh, I had a chat earlier with uh, the executive chairman of the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, talking about uh, Mr. Ayodele Subair. Uh, the conversation was around um, COVID-19, the possible impact on the revenue generation drive of the state, uh, strategies being put in place by the state government in ensuring that uh, most likely we can in increase the tax net and ensure that every taxable, I mean, residents of Lagos get taxed. Issues around the multiple taxation was also addressed and then uh, lessons, lessons that um, other state governments and even the federal government can learn in terms of uh, revenue collection modalities as put in place by the Lagos state government. Let's take a listen to that conversation. Now, COVID-19 has come with um, some huge implications on the global economy and Lagos state is no exception. How has COVID-19 impacted negatively the revenue generation drive of Lagos state? Our revenue has taken a hit in the first quarter of the year. We had the, uh, by then the outbreak was on and uh, we sat down in LRS and constituted a special committee, um, a sort of COVID task force. And this was born out of our initial design of a business continuity plan. Uh, we sat down, came up with a business continuity plan. We knew that sooner or later there was going to be a lockdown and um, to try and mitigate against that lockdown we set up certain systems from the business continuity plan which centered around provision of digital services remote services and, uh, luckily uh, late last year we had launched uh, an end-to-end -end tax administration solution called e-tax now what e-tax does is that all taxation processes that you can think of actually would run through that platform, which means that taxpayers do not have to physically come to any of the LRS locations. They can remotely access the same types of services that they would come here for. So we, we set that up and um, we made sure that we strengthened you know, all the structures around that platform to ensure that we would be able to operate you know, optimally, even with the lockdown. The other uh, digital platforms that we strengthened include our contact center, 0700 uh, call LRS. Now we knew that during that lockdown, a lot of taxpayers would have a lot of inquiries for um, LRS based on their uh, transactions, tax transactions with us. So we had to make sure that we had a viable contact center, even though there was a lockdown. So we even had to do things like buying laptops, buying handsets for these um, officers in the contact center to use. We also had to provide um, internet connectivity you know, in their homes. We bought data for the telephone handsets. All this was just to ensure that all our remote services would, you know, continue to to function effectively. So with these two major platforms, we were able to keep, you know, the business of uh, tax collection very viable and very active. Now, you recollect that the lockdown was basically in April and May. Prior to this, our, our collection rate was about 80%. But in the month of April, it was dived to about 61%. And then um, in June, it started to move up again. So June, July, we've been able to consolidate on all the various measures that we put in place. So yes, it had an impact on our revenue. Our revenue went down. But with all the measures we put in place, we were able to minimize the impact. So we only dropped by about 21% in the real sense of it during the COVID period. In January, we generated about 34.5 billion. The target was 42 billion. The target was a tall order in the first place, but 
you know, it was based on certain strategies and certain dependables that we had hoped to um, implement during the year, you know. But just about when we were settling down to actually implement some of these measures is when the, the, the um, pandemic came in. So in February, we, that 34.5 billion is an all-time high. The agency has never generated anything close to this uh, prior to this. In February, we generated about 32.5 again. In March, we generated about 32 billion. Uh, then in April, of course, it dropped to about 25.5 billion. So um, you, you can see that with the measures fully kicking in, and of course with the phase reopening, things started to get better. So in June, we were able to generate 28.5 billion, and in July, about 31 billion. So it's, it's on the upward trend based on all the various measures that we have put in place. It's important that we'll begin to look at issues around incentives for taxpayers. What has Lagos still been able to do uh, to encourage taxpayers to stay uh, paying their taxes? One of the first things we thought of was the impact of COVID on cash flows, the cash flows of the various businesses. So hitherto, we used to sort of get bullet payments for outstanding liabilities. So we decided to allow taxpayers to pay us in installments. So presently, on a case-by-case -case basis, of course, because some businesses are doing well and they really do not need to you know, have to pay certain liabilities in installments. But just to be fair to everybody, when you come on a case-by-case -case basis, we look at it and come up with a payment plan for you. Also, we decided to... Uh, for the back duty tax, um, a lot of cases going through tax reconciliation, we decided to waive the penalties and, and interest payments that are due for the tax audits between 2009 and 2015. So all the various taxpayers who are still owing us and who are still reconciling their accounts can take benefit of, of that um, palliative. The other one we did was a waiver of penalties on late filing of annual returns. You know, individuals are expected to file between the 31st of March, of, uh, uh, sorry, 1st of January and the 31st of March. But this was extended and eventually we allowed uh, late filing right up to the month of July. But the month of the, of the lockdown, which is um, April, we have said that all the taxes that were deducted in the months of April, May, and June that could not be remitted for various logistic uh, uh, problems, you can, they can, the taxpayers can actually remit them, you know, and will not be charged any penalty or any interest for the late uh, uh, remittances of those deductions at the time. And then for late filing altogether, there will not be any, any fines or penalties for filing very late. Also, we thought of the various taxpayers who have been so kind and who have you know, donated all, uh, some in cash, some in kind, some through commodities. There are all sorts of donors that have come in. So to recognize them and to encourage them, we have also said that we will allow up to 20% of the value of those donations you know, to be set out of their taxes in 2021 year of assessment. But of course, with a cap of 35%, it cannot be more than 35% of what is due in the subsequent year, next year. So uh, these are some of the measures. Again, we thought of it that due to the um, medical advisories and uh, protocols around COVID-19, we would also allow tax reconciliation exercises to be done virtually so that taxpayers really don't need to come into uh, LRS offices physically to come and reconcile their accounts. So we allow 
virtual reconciliation, you know, and um, this is proving to be quite popular. A, a lot of people, you know, prior to the pandemic, a lot of companies will tell you their MD was in the US or in the UK or wherever they are. But with the virtual reconciliation exercise now, you know, no matter where they are, no matter the part of the world that they are, they can actually participate in the, the reconciliation exercises. Another measure that we took was to increase the payment channels for taxpayers. You know, we looked at the ease of doing business and thought that The issue around multiple taxation is one that we cannot uh, shy away from. There is a, perceived, a, a perception around them. Um, uh, residents of Lagos State, uh, that um, there is a, a multiple taxation in the state. Could you, could you bring some clarity on this conversation? Okay, uh, that's a very good question and it comes up is at every tax forum that you go to, people tend to want to vent their frustrations over the seeming um, multiple tax situation, uh, uh, situation on the ground. But we look at it from a different perspective um, at the LRS. First and foremost, there are three tiers of government, the federal, the state, and the local governments. And at times, it's, you will be seen as impeding and going beyond your powers, really, when you want to try and intervene, especially with issues around uh, local government finances. So rather we want to educate um, taxpayers, right? The state, federal and state taxes are embedded in legislation. So you cannot really vary those. It's only an act of the National Assembly that can change that. But we, the, act of, uh, the National Assembly also has an act, which is the Approved Taxes and Levies Act that sort of dictates what should happen. Now there's a difference between a tax, an administrative charge, and a levy or a fine. But unfortunately taxpayers mix up everything and call it taxes, right? When they are not really taxes, they're administrative charges or they're fines or penalties that are designed to deter um, offenders really. Again, some is for the provision of certain social services. For instance, Loma would give you a bill if they clear your refuse, you know, and there are other agencies like that. And there are also some from the local governments who provide specific services and they are making specific charges. So what I would just tell taxpayers is if they feel like there's, they have been hit by multiple taxes, right? They have a right to complain. They can write to LRS, which is the main um, tax agency in the state, or they can also write maybe through the office of the commissioner for finance if they feel that, you know, so rather than make noise and say that, oh, you've been hit by multiple ch um, taxes. To me, multiple taxes will be if a tax station in Mushi that you are registered issues you with an assessment. And then another tax office in Ikui or VI also issue, issues you with an assess, assessment for your personal income tax. Then that would be multiple taxation. But it's unlikely that that will happen. There's a possibility of it happening because a lot of taxpayers go and register in, in different tax offices when they are supposed to be domiciled in only one tax office. And that's why we have solutions like the e-tax. E-tax is premised on a unique identifier, which is the BVN. So with that unique identifier, the BVN, we are able to narrow down who the taxpayers are. And also, all the it's like a, having a centralized database. And with that, the occurrence of two different stations sending you you know, two different assessments for the same period is unlikely to occur. So it's a general misconception by the public when they talk about multiple taxes. In Lagos, Lagos is very conscious about this issue of multiple taxation and we are trying to 
totally eradicate it. Maybe it might please you to know that this, at the state level, we are presently compiling a sort of revenue code, which is going to, you know, make sure that the taxes are known and they are certain. What lesson do you think the federal government, uh, the federal agency, um, saddled with the responsibility of tax collections? What lessons do you think they could learn from Lagos State and the modalities uh, at um, tax collection? The key things to look at, one, the legislative environment needs to be looked into. There are a lot of laws, for, um, tax laws and laws bordering on commerce that are very outdated. So there must be a continuous review. We thank God for the Finance Act. It's moving in the right direction. There's also been the payback push for a review of the uh, Company and Allied Matters Act. So we've seen some changes. So it must be a continuous basis so that all the old laws you know, will be revised. Secondly, is also to look at leveraging on technology. You can't do very much in the modern age without relying on technology. I know that the FRS and the customs have also made a lot of moves in improving on their services through deployment of, of uh, various solutions. Just like Okay, uh, Mr. Ayodele Subar is the executive chairman, LIRS. Most likely we'll bring you the concluding part of that interview in a subsequent edition of the show.